Jess arrived just in time to be let in with the milk. Hello, Jess. Just in time for breakfast. Julian was waiting for the milk. And Pat wanted a little drop in his tea. But Sarah didn't forget Jess. Time to be getting a move on, said Pat. I wonder what sort of day it's going to be. Let's see what the old barometer says. Oh dear, just look at that. It's pointing to snow. Now then, let's have a look at the sky. Hmm. Not a cloud. Pat tapped the barometer just to make sure. That's what I thought it said. Snow. Great. No. You mark my words, said Pat. We'll have snow today. I've never known my barometer to get it wrong. Snow, said Sarah again. Never in this world. And not a cloud in the sky. Snow, said Julian. I don't mind. We're going on a nature walk this afternoon. It'll be more fun with a bit of snow. I'm going to take some extra sandwiches, just in case. We'd better tell Mr. Pringle. It might not happen, said Sarah. Now off you go, or you'll be late. It was cold outside, even though the sun was shining. Pat hurried along to the post office. Ted Glenn had his scarf on, a sure sign that winter was on the way. Morning, Buck. Morning, Ted. Morning, Mrs. Goggins. Ooh, by gum, it's cold today. Post is none too hot either. I reckon it's going to get colder. My barometer was pointing to snow this morning. Snow? Oh, dear me, not already. Surely not snow. Such a nice sunny day. Now, what was George saying when he popped in with the egg? He had the radio on in his van. I'm sure they said it was going to be cold but dry today. Not a word about snow. These folks on the radio, what do they know about the weather in Greendale? Now then, my old barometer, I've never known it to be wrong. Jess had found something to play with. Pat and Mrs. Goggins were too busy to notice what had happened to the string. Now, that's for the village. Um, is this it? Well, I think it is, but what's happened to my nice, neat ball of string? That cat can sense when snow's on the way. Come on, Jess. Looks as if a whirlwind's been at it, never mind snow. Ever this cat. Pat was on his way. Morning, Miss Hubbard. Have you got your snowshoes ready? Snowshoes? Whatever are you talking about, Pat? We'll not be seeing snow this side of Christmas. Oh, don't be so sure. My old barometer. Oh, pooh to your barometer. I go by the TV. Well, mind how you go. There was a parcel for Dr. Gilbertson. Ready for the snow, Doctor, said Pat. Plenty of plasters and cough mixture, eh? No, said Dr. Gilbertson. What's all this about snow, Pat? It's a lovely sunny day and I always have a good stock of medicine to hand. You never know when you need it. My old barometer says it's going to snow today. Oh, Pat, I'd rather go by the Met Office. More scientific. They have computers, you know. Anyway, look at the sky. Here's your barometer. 
I don't suppose it's the snow that chills the corner of his past. Oh, well, um, it's when the weather's on the turn. Catch, you know, very sensitive. It's not too bad to chew, is it? Urgent letters. Gotta be off. Cheerio, Doctor. Morning, Fat. Lovely day. Morning, Al. Have you got your stores in? Stores, Pat? What stores? Winter stores. In case you get cut up in the snow. But there isn't any snow, Pat. Not a flake. The man in the paper said it was set fine for two weeks. Oh, thanks, Pat. <laughs> That's not what my barometer says this morning. Now, where has that cat got to? I saw something streak across the yard. It's not like your Jess to do that. Jess! Jess! What are you doing up there, Jess? Hello, Pat. Hello, Dorothy. Now, hasn't your Jess been stuck up in oak trees in his time? Oh, I am. He knows things we don't know. Come on, Jess. Well, he's got a funny way of showing it. Pat was on his way again. Seasonal, I'd say. Mind you, it was never like this when I was a girl. Come November, the snow would be coming down like feathers. We were cut off for weeks. We couldn't get to school, you know. You mark my words. We'll have snow today. Well, mind how you go. Bye. Bye, Pat. I don't know, Jess. Nobody seems to believe in my old barometer anymore. I'm not sure I do, but they can't say I didn't warn them. Gee, nothing like a spot of woodwork. Hmm. Better take this end off. Morning, Ted. Hello, Pat. Ted, you've not let your stove go out, have you? I was just looking forward to a good warm-up. <laughs> I'm too busy to bother with it. Besides, it's like a spring day today. You get warm doing a bit of sawing and that. I'd get it going now if I were you. There's a real cold snap on the way. If you'd seen my barometer this morning, I'd never known it to be wrong. Nay, Pat, that's old-fashioned stuff. It's best if you leave that sort of thing to the experts. I listen to the radio. Hmm. I don't know about all these new fangled knickknacks. Give me my grand's barometer any time. Hello, Pat. Hello, Sam. arrived at the village school, just as Mr. Pringle was setting out with the children. Morning, Mr. Pringle. I hope you're not going far. There's snow on the way, you know. Well, don't worry, Pat. We'll be as safe as the letters in your bag. 
You know what the scout say. Be prepared. Besides, here's the Pencaster Gazette local weather report. Set fair to the weekend. Well, you couldn't ask better than that. That's not what my barometer says. It says snow. We well, promise we'll be really careful. We'll just go up the teeniest hill, no further than Burkhout Barn at the most. Well, mind how you go. Uh, makes you wonder, Jess. There again, I could be wrong. sweeping up the leaves. Well, no, Pat. It's this sand. Makes such a mess. Gets everywhere. There was I thinking there was snow on the way. Then, bless us all, the wind turned, and out came the sun. The good Lord smiles upon us at mysterious times. Well, I do hope you're right, Reverend. I'd best be on my way. Cheerio. Afternoon, Mrs. Pottage. There's a parcel for you today. Thanks, Pat. I'd best not open it. I promised to meet the twins on their way back from... Oh, Pat, look! Snow at last. My dear old barometer was right, after all. We'd both best be on our way before it gets really bad. And there's the ancient oak and the willow. And when the cold weather comes, the little creatures will begin the long winter sleep. I wouldn't mind staying in bed for the winter, says Tom. Just a pain. And over in the meadow, the swift hare. Remember to put that in your nature diaries. Mr. Pinkham, no. And here we see the last of the dog roses. Oh, please, Mr. Pinkham, it's starting to... Over there, that's bracket fungus. Don't touch it. It's deadly poisonous. I'm cold. And there, the rooks. Flying from tree to tree, swooping and foot! Ow! My foot! Ouch, it hurts! Oh! Oh, Mr. Pringle, are you all right? It's, um, it's getting a bit snowy and cold. Can we go home, please? Oh, ouch! Well, yes, that would be a good idea. A very good idea. But I don't think I can walk, children. That barometer was right after all. Oh, I wish he was here with his band to take us home. George! George! Where are you? He can't have gone far in this weather. Basket, will you? Now then, look at this. Those little marks in the snow. Tracks. Well, it's not Jess. He hates the snow. I reckon it's a fox after my fried hens. Let's lock them up safely, said Pat. Cheerio. Bye, Pat. Oh, 
getting deeper by the moment, and the road was slippery. Ooh, ooh Coming downhill, Pat slid backwards into a field. Luckily, the gate was open. At last, Pat reached the village. He stopped outside the school to collect young Julian. about the snow, Pat. Your old barometer beats my radio. I wish it had been wrong and the children were back safely. Now then, said Mrs. Pottage, they'll be all right with Mr. Pringle. Young snow's getting awful deep. They should be back by now. It's getting dark. Well, the snow stopped. At least something must have happened to them. Now, I remember Mr. Pringle said they were going as far as Burkow Bowl. They might have taken shelter there, said Ted. I wonder if I could get through with my van. You'll only get stuck. I'll tell you what. Why don't we have a go with my lorry? It's bigger and heavier. We'd have a chance. There's a barn over there, Mr. Pringle. We could go in and shelter. We'd be warmer out of the wind. Well, that's an excellent idea, young Julian. You're getting slower and slower in this snow. Come on, children. Ah, great! Bill's found a light. Now, children. Let's set them down. There's plenty of straw. That's it. What do we do now? Ah, uh, that's better. Nothing much. Ouch. My foot. Now for the emergency supplies. Hot cocoa and biscuits. seen that tree somewhere before. But everything looks different in all this snow. Then, they get stuck in the snow. Oh, that's done it. Come on, Pat. We'll have to dig ourselves out. You dig your side, Pat. I'll dig mine. Won't take long. Hot work, this. That should do it. Let's give her a try.
down, but a bit of wet got on to the plugs, I bet, said Tim. It'll be all right when I get it dried out. I'm sure I know this lane, said Pat. I'll just have a look. Not that I'm going to see much in the dark. Hmm, better be getting back. What's that? It sounds like... Oh! Oh! It sounds like singing. Ted! Ted! There's somebody over there, singing. I heard them. Clear as clear. What do you want about that singing? How can there be? Listen. You're right. Let's get a move on, said Tim. enough singing. We'd better get you home. Take it easy, Mr. Pringle. Take it easy. Like a hand, Mr. Pringle. Easy as you go now. Watch that foot. Thank you, Ted. Last one. Up uh, uh, you go. story young Julian had to tell Sarah. It was great fun, really it was. It's a bad spring. You will soon be fine with a bit of rest. Well done, Pat and Ted. That was magnificent. But I know one thing. Next time I want to know what the weather's going to do, I'll ask Pat what his barometer has to say before I do anything else. Here, here, me too. Champion, said Ted. Proper champion. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Early in the morning, just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Postman Pat, Postman Pat. 